elk, deer, moose, any kind of animal like that is this. Lodge is what? Like a house? Like a cabin. Would you say? Yeah, cabin. Something like that. Okay. Mm. Elk lodge. It, that's more like elk house. We'll take it. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Can you help me, please? (laughs) I feel like somebody's grandma. Okay, he's getting, (laughs) clicking on something. Now, what now? What did you click on so I can do that again next? (laughs) You take notes. Can you hear that? I'm so sorry, you guys. Dopey, no worries. All good. I wonder if it's my fault. I don't know. Yeah, I can hear you guys on the computer, which is- Oh, so the headphone. Yeah. Interesting. Whatever, you know. Rock and roll. You got to you got to make do, you know. Yeah. Thank you for okay. coming on um Rachel Frost everybody. Also this is Paul. I know you've never, Hi. Hi, never Rachel. met nice Paul. To meet you. It's so nice to meet you too. I've heard a lot about you and I've obviously stalked you on Instagram. So. I wonder if I was just stalking you on Instagram <laughs> and we were looking at all your jewelry. Yes. Okay, I was going to say should I like send you photos or something or like what's like cuz I I brought Mm. things with me but it's just not the same so for the people listening you make this clay jewelry earrings mostly it looks like yes. right and mm-hmm. it's it's uh boobs butts weens and everything in between right it's yeah it's, and everything in between and what is in between that would be the taint like, right <laughs> yeah it's it's just every day is like a new challenge today i made a book out of clay sometimes there's not even any body parts involved. Oh, it's interesting. Was that a commission? Said, well, it was like a little book with like a heart. Or I mean, like an upside down heart or like boobs. And then she said that I could pick the title of the book. So I put a tale of two titties. On it. <laughs> so, Brilliant. That's like an old teacher joke. That's the teacher and you coming through. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll see a student in the comments and I'm like, oh God. Yeah, it's like, ooh. Wait, I want to talk block. about that because it's interesting. I mean, you were a teacher for many years. I forget what age group were you teaching mainly? High school. Okay. Mm. I, was, I was teaching high school sign language for five years. Okay. And obviously there's a lot of professionalism that you have to have when you're working as in like in a school. And now you're doing something that's pretty wild and spunky. What's that been like? It's... It's been so weird. It's, I can't even like figure out a way to tell people. Like I just went to a wedding last weekend and people were like, so you're still teaching. And it's like, I haven't even prepared what I'm going to tell people (laughs) that like, I quit my job. I like decided to quit right at the beginning of the pandemic. It was March 6th. It was like the last day I was in that school. So this was like a, a decision you made separately like it wasn't related to the pandemic. It was just on your own. No. Yeah. I wanted oh. to teach college level because I have my master's. And so I thought, you know, just getting that teacher burnout. It's been five years. I was doing a lot of student council related things, just like burning the candle at both ends. And so I, I applied for a job at a college and I didn't get it, but I thought I'm still going to quit because Luke, my fiance is so supportive and was like, we will figure it out. Just still quit because you're not happy at your job. And so I decided to go into unemployment at a time when like everybody was going like unwillingly going into unemployment, Mm -hmm. which is so crazy. But yeah. And so the clay thing has nothing to do with anything. It's just, it just happened. I just bought a bunch of polymer clay, cooking clay is what like my sister always used to play with that when we were kids. And I was like, I can't afford Christmas gifts this year. I'm just going to make Everybody earrings is always going to be a homemade Christmas. It's always homemade for me because I'm usually broke. And so I just, I just went crazy. I just was (laughs) like, what would happen if a couple of tits just like showed up? And sure enough, they did. They were bright green, like alien green. And I was like, who would like to wear these? Who would wear these? And I just kept going, couldn't stop. And I just remember every night, like for three nights before I posted that video that went viral, I was like saying goodnight to the to the earrings. They were on my little table and I was just like, God, they're so perfect. I don't understand why I made them, but they're so cute. And the, like, damn it, I can make a penis. I can make the most realistic microscopic don't penis. say I don't have any talents. Mm-hmm. I, it's a talent. I never would have, I, it's like 
some, the universe is trying to tell me something here. Yeah. So Those I thought I'll just make a you. video. <laughs> and the video before I posted it at like 9 a.m. And by noon, it had already reached a million views. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, so confused. I, I, we were, my fiance and I were just like, what the fuck is going on? Right, like, like, why like, do, what is that why? number? Just because, okay, the video is kind of you basically saying a similar story of like, I can't stop making these folks. It was like, they just keep coming and coming. And it was just a very candid, quick, like, I've been overcome with the spirit and it's telling me to you're make like peace. Jonah Hill in super bad where you're like, I just keep drawing dicks. I can't do it. That I was stop. like such a common comment on that it was so just like, funny. Oh my God, it's Seth from, from super bad. I was like, that is actually how I have felt that entire time. And, and one person commented and said, what a, like you're plugging your shop. We all know what you're doing. You're just plugging your, your Etsy shop. And I was like, no, you no. this was just like an earnest video of me being like, <laughs> you like I don't know what to do I had $20 in my bank account I was like gonna make earrings for my sisters for Christmas I was like my plan and I was like I'm running out of time and I don't want to make anything but boobs butts and wings what do they say desperation is the mother of ingenuity or something yeah I don't know if it's I that, don't but think it's maybe something, yeah, someone said something it something like that but it's certainly mm. the case here. So I saw a picture on your page of like all of your family helping you make make jewelry out in the yard recently is it like has it gotten that big you need all hands on deck or was that more of like a fun fun project no that was just over christmas um i just like decided i i was dealing with so many orders at over christmas it went from like i don't have enough money for christmas gifts to like i don't have enough time to do anything but you know and so i brought all my stuff down to tucson and i just showed them my process at that time of, of how i was making the boobs and like how simple it was. And Becky and Sarah, my, my two sisters are, are so incredibly talented. They are just art there. I have come from a family of artists and Becky made like a really cute little alien head, just like whipped it up. My sister made that cool. I don't know if you saw, she made like a deconstructed ween. It was like more abstract. Cause she's such an, <laughs> that's just how she is. Mm-hmm. And that, I put that on my shop and it sold immediately. And it's just so funny. Wow. So that was just over, over Christmas, but Luke has been really helpful with like, you know, I, can, I won't let anyone touch my dicks. So really <laughs> he just helps with the behind the scenes, but no, like it, it has, I have been really, really lucky to have been able to handle the, the loads. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> So no, I, it's been great. It's been like progressively busier too. And it's really, really cool to see what happens when I post a video on TikTok and how quickly sales. Okay. Who do we have here? How quickly sales happen. Like the correlation is like almost immediate, which wow. is interesting because it just means that I have to be like glued to this app mm, exactly. that like is primarily used by like teenagers. And I have to like try to stay like relatable, but also I have found that people just really like it when I'm just like me. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like, you know, you said when you made that first video that you weren't trying to advertise anything, you were just making a video and that the the authenticity is probably what people sort of like connected with, I would think. I'm sure. But you're obviously, I mean, you're hysterical and super charismatic and lovely. So yeah, I think that's probably what people are responding to, but I've visited your Etsy shop. We're talking like thousands of sales. If I can say how much I've made, I would not like that to be like okay. aired, but say you guys, it, it's we'll... fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. And I have been checking and in the first night, my sh- entire shop sold out and I made like almost dollars hey. like overnight. Wow. Insane. I think- and. I, if, if things continue to go well this year, I could, I could have, I could be a person that has made dollars, which as a teacher, it's just like, hmm, I, one day, one day the laws will change and I'll get paid more. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's that just never seen maybe as a college teacher, but I still not even then they don't get paid that much more. So yeah. the fact that this has happened and I'm getting better at it is, is blowing my mind. It's mm. like, uh, you know, I, I thought my proudest moment was getting my master's degree, but it's not, <laughs> this is like, 
I have an LLC. Like, that's crazy. It's amazing. Yes. Well, good job. And, like, yeah, congratulations Seriously. and good job. Like, uh, it's amazing. You're all, you're going to need to be like McDonald's. It'll be like a million dicks sold or something. Like that, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. My million dick. If only I've been yeah. counting. I could probably crunch some numbers and figure out how yeah. many. Yeah. How, what would be your guess? How many? Maybe just start a tally on your website so you don't have to keep counting them, but it'll just yeah. do it for you. You know, I could, I could figure this out pretty quickly, but if we're talking... Like, we'll just say 700 orders on my Etsy shop if a third of those are dicks. You know, that's a lot of dicks. A lot of dicks, and there's two <laughs> dicks per order. Right. Depending on the combo. Sometimes people want, have people ask for the craziest stuff. A skateboard with a ween on it. Um, a, a mushroom. I don't know. Uh, we saw the mushroom. You, you yeah, posted that on your Instagram, the, right? Yeah. Yeah, mushroom cap. It, it's insane. What else? Um vaginas have been the only thing that I I've only had a couple of requests and I've only like fully made one that I really like. And I put, I put it on my, <laughs> on my Instagram. I don't know why <laughs> they're like the hardest things for me. And I, I, I have one. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and do, the vaginas don't sell as well. People don't really ask for them that much. Mm. Um, yeah. So funny. I, I do a lot of top surgery scars and like, scars in general and stretch marks and like um putting emphasis on the things like I'm going to do an order tomorrow where she wants like glittery stretch marks like to emphasize the things that mm. women and people in general are super self-conscious about and I think early very early somebody was like I have a little penis and I really want to just I want to flaunt that and so I made him like teeny tiny penis earrings and wow. it was just <laughs> smallest piece of clay this is so nice you're finding a way to like take care of so many people with that yeah what it like it's just so there's something so innocent and really like sweet about it even though like Mm -hmm. it's it's dicks you know like (laughs) there's something so wholesome about it It, in a weird way it's 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 fascinating yeah the way that my mom my mom is mormon and not you know she's not like active mormon but she's also in her 60s so just your typical like boomer type mom. Mm -hmm. And she said that when she's telling people, she's like, they're just like cartoons. They're just fun little cartoons. And it's like, well, mom, when you get up close to this, (laughs) you, there's ridges, there's, you know, the curvature and there's, I, the shaft, I put (laughs) a lot of effort into mom. It might be, um, cartoon in that it's like sometimes like not human colors, but Mm -hmm. Helen, this is a dick. This is real. Yeah. any of my relatives were to look at this up close, they'd be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I, I love it. Like, where did your skill for, uh, have you always been sort of artistic and, and, and good at drawing and working with clay and stuff? I've always been good with my hands. Um, I made, well, I don't know if I can turn the camera, but there's this, like, yarn thing. Oh, cool, yeah. I made that. Yeah. I love, I, I just like to try it all. I loved photography when I was in college. I, I thought I was going to get my degree in photography and then I was I went into education. And I over quarantine, I just like got all the arts and crafts that I could get and just like experimented. And um my soon-to-be stepdaughter is four and we got her a little like electronic car, but it do- didn't work and we like painted the whole thing. Mm. And I just have always liked making things really is just like creating things and I'll just like send them to people. This has been the only time I've ever like profited off of it, which it's amazing. Fucking cool. I feel yeah, like especially like, at a time right now. I've never profited off of my art in my life. I mean, I, I've been paid like a little bit for like playing a show. Like I was a drummer and I would, but still, but it's, you it's make amazing. art too. But I make you, art you a lot. You feel compelled to give it away. Yeah. Often. yeah. If people buy it, I just give it away. Cause I'm like, ah, like I'm just glad you want it. Like, right. Uh, yeah. It's like, it's, it's an honor for anybody to even like this kind of stuff, but to pay for it, it adds a level of like imposter syndrome to my life that I thought I had rid myself of and in, in quitting my teaching job. But it's like, I now that like, I know people are paying for these, like some of these are really delicate, like the peels on these earrings, you can't dick around with them. They will break. And, and I've had, Oh shit. I dropped <laughs> <laughs> Like seriously, <laughs> I'm just, uh, slinging dicks all over the place but <laughs> when they break or when I get like one guy messaged me and was like I asked for 
mauve and this is purple. And like, you know, I have to be like, oh my gosh. I have to have like customer service. Right. And like, I know my, I'm my own boss, but having, it's such a blessing to have people want to pay for it. But I also is like, pay for it and like it and keep your mouth shut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Or right. else. Yeah. Or else. <laughs> yeah. Or else. What's the, yeah. sorry. Oh no. What's the hardest part about, uh, the hardest part of the dick, you know, like, is it the, um, Oh, that's such a good question. I would say would be adding, putting the balls on because mm. I do it separately. And I, I will say, I don't like to gatekeep. That's like a term that I just learned about in starting this gatekeeping, like techniques on how to like work with polymer clay. I, you know, see videos all the time on my for you page of like how to properly like cure clay and stuff like that. So my method is I have a mold. I made like a my breasticle, it's the penis that ends in in breasts, breasticles. Mm-hmm. I use Love the it. mold to make the tip of the dick of the, the inside part for an un, for a circumcised penis, like the inside part. And then on the back, when I'm holding the mold, and this is all like right here <laughs> in my face, mm-hmm. I have my cuticle, my cuticle pusher is my go-to tool for everything. And I just, just barely like, if this is the clay, I just barely push a little bit. So it like makes a little ridge and that's all. And then you just have to smooth it out. Really. It's just the shaft. And my biggest problem all like across the board is dust. Oh, just I will have like, if somebody wants a, like a pale skin tone Caucasian, I will like be working on it. And then like a teeny tiny piece of dust will land on it. And just you, and my big fat beefy hands, I can't just like <laughs> take it off uh-huh. and I'm shaky all the time. So it's, that can be, <laughs> I've never had so many temper tantrums over dust before. Wow. So yeah, is your is your house more control. like cleaner air now? You're vacuuming more than more often than normal or something to keep the dust down? <sighs> yeah, it's just we have cats. It's just there's oh, like a lot and we're yeah. just like very messy people. So sure. when we clean <laughs> it's like because we have to because right. the children are going to be here. Yeah. We have to like, you know, get it prepared for every event in our life. Mm-hmm. But besides yeah. that, it would be like baking the clay too. Baking it, it's like very temperamental, hard to, I have like a little toaster oven. I went from using our oven to a toaster oven. There's a lot of stuff that I had no idea about clay. And people were right in the beginning asking questions like about like things. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I'm properly doing this. Like, how do you, I've learned how to jewelry make also like drilling and, you know, earring backs and things like that. Things that have nothing to do with clay. I've had to quickly, very quickly learn how to do. Yeah. That's kind of the cool thing. Like, I guess this happened with your viral video, but all of a sudden you're sort of in over your head with no choice, but to figure it out. And so you're learning things so quickly because you have to, you know, and it's like it sort of forces, yeah. forces it to happen. It's terrifying. And, and I go back and think about that because now I get overwhelmed. Like I get overwhelmed if I have five big orders that are due in one day. And I was like, in December, I was slinging like 60 dicks a day. Like I was just like cranking them out. There's a picture of me holding like a tray of just like an army of boobs. And, and it's like, damn, I, I could do a lot more then. That means I can do a shitload now. So I have to remind myself that just because like sales are slowing down compared to how it started doesn't mean that I need to. And like time management has been Mm. a real bitch. That's been hard too. I believe it. How often are the, um, your stepkids over there every weekend, every week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his stepson or my stepson was here for about five months doing online school and then they went back to in-person. So he's back in Seattle, but he'll be back in Mm. just a couple of months when he's done with school and his daughter, we get every weekend. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So it's fun. It's like a fun dose of youth. Yeah. (laughs) And, and I always just wonder like at one point, is she going to go back to her mom's and say something about my job? Cause I try to keep it very separate. My office is like my work desk is in our room and stuff, but one time she did say, Rachel's making butts. <laughs> I, like, I mean, I think it makes sense why you would, a mom might have questions, some follow-up questions, right. but I don't know. It's 
why not live loud? You're just living loudly. These are the parts we've yeah. got. We're celebrating them. There's no shame. I mean, I think it's helpful. A lot of people would not feel that comfortable talking about weens and peens mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. we're repping them. So it's it really is like a little tool to kind yeah. of take some ownership over yourself, yeah. your body. It's a, I don't know. Yeah, it What's is not cool. to say? And like, how about cool that, that the guy was like, I got a tiny dick. Like, I want to rep it, you know, like, or like <laughs> someone's like, I have stretch marks. I want to rep it. Like, you're sort of, people are sort of praising their insecurities. Maybe not praising, but you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, it's, it seems like therapeutic like emphasizing for a lot of people. Them and, yeah. and celebrating them. And people can be very, very detailed about their body parts. And, <laughs> and that can, that's just like fun. And like, when people put their custom orders in, the, they, it's like they know that I'm going to read them now sometimes like on TikTok because I'll just like read what they wrote to me because they're fucking hilarious. Like people will want, they will describe things as like girthy, but not too girthy, but enough to scare an old, like a group of old ladies or something. It's just like the little details that they have or like reasonable shaft, not too, like not too long, but like definitely with some like hefty weight to it, like just like the adjectives to describe. Oh um, and then to describe themselves, a lot of times I've had like breast reductions. And so like one earring will be the before size and the other one will be the after size. And so they will describe to every detail, the mole place it, placement and like scars if they have any and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I get a lot of information about somebody's nipples, like <laughs> puffy. Right. That's do you not, do people send you the adjective, yeah. pictures Coffee. of their dicks? Like, give me an earring of this dick. I have gotten a picture of tits, not dicks. Oh, wow. um, I got a picture shocked. of like what an example of a T dick is, a, like a trans dick. Oh, I had okay. to like Google it. Uh-huh. Like, What's t-? Um, it, but it was like a like a textbook like surgery just to kind of like, sh- and which is like very helpful. So people will send pictures. Mm. I always say like, please ask first. Mm-hmm. So I, you, you have, know, the, because then that's I just need like, to know what's coming, right? Like yeah. I can't be reading the messages over here while, while watching yeah. the little Consent one. Consent is you know? important. Yes. <laughs> have you, uh, other than the, the tea dick you talked about, have you learned like things about anatomy that you didn't know before as far as like the penis and like, you know, things like that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I've had to Google. um, I've had to just like Google penises. Sometimes I like forget. I sometimes forget what they look like. I just like, I'm doing them over and over and over again. I'm like, how does the tip look again? Get in here real quick. Like, let me like, like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Like in the beginning, there's pictures from the beginning that I sent Luke like a voicemail that was like, if I had to look at that old picture from like when my business first started of the weens, I'm going to like close my shop because of the first, like one of the first pictures, it was just like, like a droopy long dick with the balls were like so long, which, you know, they exist, but I don't want that. And I just was like, damn, if that's how I started out and looking at it now, I'm, I've definitely made a lot of growth, but they look gross. Like if I unzip somebody's pants and that's what I saw, I would scream. Mm. So I've gotten better though. Uh, now you yeah. just have to figure out how to deal with that Arizona dust and you'll be really golden. Oh my God. I know. And like, it's so windy in Phoenix right now. It's been so windy for the past couple of days. Um, but also going back to your question about anatomy, like the yeah. people that have had um, top surgery, I've had to, look up a lot of the scar patterns because I've gotten requests for like L scar patterns where they like kind of cut up and then some of them are straight across. Like I'm learning a lot about like trans procedures, um, for procedures for trans people. And that, that's been really just like fucking cool that people are wanting to share that with me. And then also want me to like make something for them to celebrate mm-hmm. this, this body that they have and a, a body that they're proud of. And, just, I, I wasn't expecting so much love from like the LGBTQ plus community. And that's been very nice. So uh-huh. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's Super amazing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Are there plans to expand? Like, do you kind of look at it? Like I'm going to need someone else making dicks pretty soon or. <laughs> um, expand. I want to expand my, like my types of jewelry. Mm. I want to make some suitable for work earrings too. 
I know that like whenever I get an order and it's just for the eggs, because I made one pair of eggs, I just think they're doing that because they're cute or because they want to support me, but don't want to wear anything else that I have because it's like, you know, it's a very specific type of earrings. So I want to expand on just making like Sigfus earrings, mm-hmm. Christine. I'm sure, sure, you know, you probably have a ton of Sig, just like those cool designs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Super she's, vibrant. I always look at her account and just look at the the kind of stuff that she does. And I don't want to like copy anything in any way, but I have made some beautiful, beautiful, just slabs of clay in the process of making a tiny dick where I'm like, man, I would just wear a bl- like, I would just wear this. It's, it's so pretty. Like I made one for, um, I think, I, I don't know if you go on my TikTok, it's like this big Arizona shaped video. Um, and this person, her father passed away and he like died in Wickenburg and she wanted to get a pin that like commemorated him and the beautiful Arizona skies. And I made a piece of sunset looking clay. Like it mm. looked exactly like an Arizona sunset. Wow. I started I need some I of that. Finished like the whole pin. I just was like, Holy, that's like what I see at my parents' house when I go into the backyard. And it's, I want to get into making just like beautiful other things. Just like I make these yarn things and, I just, I want to, I want to do it in a way that will still please the people because the people are the ones that are paying my bills. Um, but also that like fulfills me because as much as I love making boobs, butts and weens all day, every day, those custom orders, like random shit, like books and stuff are challenges that are telling me like, I can do this. I can, I can go further. So in terms of expanding with employees, no, but I will need to ex- expand my space at some point. I have, I have already moved twice to bigger like spots in the house and I'm running out of room. So a studio, know, maybe yeah, you need a, a real workspace. Like a warehouse. That's so yeah. cool. A workshop. Mm-hmm. I would love yeah. that. There's something I think, I don't know, our, our friend's an artist in Chicago and he got like access to some sort of community workspace. And he was talking about how nice it is to have somewhere to go. And it sort of just like changes your mentality as you're, you know, you're out of your house, you're committed to the process of doing work. And I don't know. Well, that's so cool. I'm proud of you. It's awesome. It's really, it's inspiring. You know, it really is. I think it's awesome that you took a chance and just keep doing what you feel like you should be doing. And all your fans will follow. We'll we'll follow you. I'm gonna no get matter some dick what ears. you make. I, I'm gonna pierce my ears with your dick. Oh my gosh! With your dicks. <laughs> uh, do it. I will. Or I mean, I could get you like I could, I'll send you a pin or something. Oh, I mean, we got pins too. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I got I, all I kinds ro- of stuff. You got it. Crocs? Do you wear Croc shoes? He doesn't mm-hmm. wear I mean, shoes <laughs> ever. Actually, it's a fun fact. No shoes, really. Not ever, yeah. but keeps, you know. I, but I don't wear Crocs. He generally doesn't wear shoes. He keeps his shoes in the car, so he's got his car shoes in case he needs them to run into like the grocery store or something. But other than that, <laughs> he goes to work and to about ninety percent of places without shoes. It's true. Damn. Well, I make. You know, they're called. <laughs> They're called croc gibbets. Okay. It, gibbets. Like the ones, the things you stick the in there. plugs. Oh. And I made, I was like, I had my listing on Etsy, croc gibbets, croc gibbets. And then I got an email from Crocs, like the company that was like, please stop using our name. Oh. And so now I just call them shoe decorations. Nice. <laughs> well, I've heard that those are like the trendiest shoes again this spring. So stay tuned because the Crocs and are you, coming you, back. They are very comfortable, but when you walk in them, you sound like SpongeBob. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, mm, I couldn't, I've me. never surrendered. It was like, I don't know. I read some, it was like a Buzzfeed article or something and was making fun of Birkenstock. It was like, move over Birkenstock. The Crocs are back. And oh my just, God, I, I've never been ready. I've never, I've never worn, warm, warmed up to them, but I do like the idea of jewelry for my shoes. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. Like I, I could see um, that like some chains yeah. hanging off my boots or something. Mm, yeah. But, yeah. That'd be cool. I had a pair of Croc, like Mary Jane type shoes when I worked at Congress and I left them in my car one time, like, and I didn't work for a few days and I found them. I have size 11 feet. And when I got the shoes out of my car in Arizona, it's very hot. They had like shriveled up and like crippled. Like, <laughs> West. I was like, what? I wasn't even upset. I was just laughing. They wow. were like flat. And then just like, they were like doll shoes. Uh-huh. I was like, 
Yeah, like yeah, I said, I just put some hooks in them and made them earrings. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You could. Oh Dip them in gosh. bronze. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you do you miss being in Tucson? Um, I did when I was at a job that I was miserable at. Mm-hmm. When I was teaching, I did. Um, but no, I I am two hours away, and I go there so much. Like it's it's the perfect distance. Um, I do see myself eventually moving back to Tucson. I mm-hmm. this this house is wonderful, but this town Chandler the not it's not my home mm-hmm. and so i forget did but luke you grow guys up are there? in la we're How in la that? we're in glendale it's it, it's basically la yes yeah, it's, it's greater la area i think my sister used to live in glendale nice yeah glendale is cool That's- like um we moved here mid-pandemic so we haven't like there's so many restaurants so many cool places to go in in glendale that we have yet to experience just the other day for yeah. the first time we left the house on foot, walked to a restaurant, like had some drinks, had some dinner and then walked back home. And like, that was my dream when we moved in. I was like, I've never been able to, I've never lived somewhere where I can just walk out of my house, like go get drunk or in, and eat oh my gosh. and then walk home, you know, like how there's, amazing. Yeah. There's a grocery store on our block too. And I've never lived in walking distance. I mean, I've lived probably in what should be walking distance, but this is like a it's on like right your block, there. you know, it's so that nice when so you forget cool. something for a recipe or like you just need that one thing and you don't want to make a whole production of it. So, yeah, I love that. But yeah, yeah so no, no. It, I, when it, my sister lived in Glendale, she lived right behind Dinah's Chicken. Dinah's you know, Dinah's, it's like fried chicken. Mm. The The chicken is in the scene of Little Miss Sunshine when they're eating fried chicken. I know that's weird, but I just remember <laughs> one time seeing the bucket and being like, you know I, my sister used to live behind them. Mm. The smell of fried chicken wafting in at any time of the day, I will want fried chicken. At eight in the yeah. morning, I house that for them. I was like, God damn it. It's going to be a third <laughs> night for fried chicken. <laughs> and like, I, can't, I couldn't stop. It was so good. Yeah, wow. there are some Love good smells linger, like floating around the neighborhood sometimes. You just, yeah. it hits you. And you're like, damn, somebody's yeah. cooking something really good. Really good, like Mediterranean and Armenian, like the yeah. big Armenian community mm-hmm. here. So like, a lot of just great flavors. I see like a lot of like families barbecuing too. Mm. And Mm. you know, I haven't eaten meat in years and years, but the smell still gets me. I'm like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -mm. No, I haven't eaten meat since like 2015. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. So you two met in college you grew up in Tucson and went to the University of Arizona, University yeah, of Arizona. That's right. In Tucson, and right. then you went to you went to the same school. So same you guys school, yeah. Met. But I guess yeah. I was trying to think of that. I remember you working at Congress as the hostess for the Cup Cafe, and yes, I don't think we really like knew each other that much. But I definitely remember you were kind of like, you're hard to miss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You are. You're just so wonderful. You're like, it's your job to socialize and entertain. So I just always like knew yeah. of you, I think, before I actually knew knew you. Local I think celeb. the first photo, I think our first interaction was at Deuce is Wild. Deuce Michelle is wild. and uh, somebody, and somebody else's 20, 22nd birthday party or 20th. I can't remember. Deuce it's is been so wild. long. But anyways, there's a picture of me and I had short hair and you had really long hair. And you had your hair draped over mine, and I had like yes. fashioned it to look like long hair. Mm. And yes. I just like so fucking dumb. And you can tell that they're your. Bo- I'm sure I was just like, Christine, come down here and let me put your head on my head. You're like, I want to see what I look like with long hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Still I haven't gotten that far. Remember that. That's funny. Oh so you guys gosh. just sort of met through mutual friends, like. Uh- yeah, I think it's yeah, just that's how a lot of all like our friendships all started. It all started with like Amanda mm-hmm. and just kind of like came down. So wait, but Michelle. how do you know Amanda? Through because I think I know Michelle. Michelle. So I know Michelle through Amanda. I know I it started with Kelsey and Michelle in um, an education class, mm-hmm. mm. and then I'm that's how of I met course Amanda. you were all education majors. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, and then I went I. Dropped out that semester, or not dropped out, but I I left the education major and went into 
interpreting, educational interpreting and sign language or deaf studies. So, so wait, then you were in the, mo- were you, no, not the, mo- was that in Harville? Where were your classes? Where, what's that building? At the College of Education. Oh, is it all in there? Okay. Yeah, because it was educational interpreting. It was, my major was in deaf studies and my minor, or I guess it was just deaf studies and educational interpreting. So I had graduated with the plan of being an educational interpreter, but my final semester was just like, I I just didn't like it. I had to interpret for this girl in Sierra Vista. They didn't have enough placements for all of us to find like deaf students to interpret for in the high school. And so I had to go to Sierra Vista, didn't get enough time like practicing interpreting. So when I took my like performance assessment, I got a 3.0. I would be able to get a job maybe, but it wasn't good enough. And like the pressure of interpreting, I think it's harder than teaching. Mm. You're constantly, you have to be like listening, interpreting, and then signing because ASL and English are not the same language. So like, for instance, in sign language, time goes first. So if I were to say, what are you doing tomorrow? In sign language, I'd have to say tomorrow, what are you doing? Oh, okay. And so there's always like a two second. And if somebody's talking fast or if you can't hear them or you get there's all these kinds of things, but by, then you also have the yeah. voice for the deaf people. When the deaf people sign, or sign, you have to be their voice. And that's where I just crashed and burned in the performance assessment. There's like videos that you watch and you're holding a mic- microphone and interpreting. And then uh, you hear something and you sign. In the part where I had to watch videos of uh, deaf people signing, where I had to voice at one point, it was like 15 second slides going by and I would just have to da, 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 say it and go. At one point, so many slides had gone by and I was just quiet and I was holding the microphone and I just went, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 and then so I, whoever was like <laughs> judging that or like grading that was probably like, <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> I just like lost Which it. Which slide I, was I, that? Did we put... God. It's like an eighth grader signing about her pet gerbil or whatever. Oh. And I was just like, she had fake nails on. You can't do that. It's just, like, mm. You can't do that. Oh, <laughs> and, how did you get into that in the first place? I just took sign language in when I went to, I went to community college before I went to the U of A. And I, for whatever reason, my, I took like four years of French in high school, but for whatever reason, the credits didn't transfer. So I had to take a language And I just took sign language. It was just, it seemed like an easy A and it was so much fun. I was so good at it. I was in drama in high school. So like my facial expressions, I feel like the teacher, Mm. but like, that's the grammar in sign language, like question marks. Yes. No questions are eyebrows up. WH questions are eyebrows down. There's like all kinds of things like with your head and your neck and your tongue. Um, so it's, I, it just seemed so natural to me. I don't, it just seemed, it's a beautiful language too. It's fascinating. And the culture, I had no idea. And a lot of people have no idea um, that the deaf community is like very, very strong and proud and just, it was just cool. It's just beautiful so to learn yeah. about an entire culture that. That is such a cool realize. thing to sort of get into. Cause it's like, I mean, I'm not making, I'm not being funny, but it's like a silent culture, you know, it's a culture that's out there. They're talking, maybe there's like even a, you know, but like, if you don't know, like you're missing it completely. Like we're all completely Mm -hmm. unaware of potentially like this, like huge culture, you know? Yeah. Like silent, but they're so loud, Uh like with their conviction and everything. Um, Yeah. It's like, the deaf community are not to be fucked with. That is one thing that like, and it's insane how many things are still not available to deaf people, like closed captioning on airplanes. They don't, they just, they just don't have them on a lot of airplanes. Like Delta doesn't have closed captioning on their like in flight. So just deaf people just have to sit there, you know, like privileges that we all get just because we can hear Deaf people have to like ask if there's something available to them and just like watching like YouTube videos and trying to put the closed captioning on. It's just, it's wow. stupid, but. And sign language. Yeah. I mean, oh, and I didn't want to, to interpret, but I wanted to still like keep using sign language 
So I took a couple of years and just was like a waitress for a while. And then I went back and got my master's in education so that I could at least teach it. And that turned out to be like, oh, okay, that's what I'm, this is what I'm supposed to do, not interpret in terms of like spreading the love of sign language. Now it's making dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Life a, a is so path. goddamn weird. Isn't it? You know, it's, so what, when it's you were, what happens when you're busy making other plans. Uh huh. So when you were teaching yeah. sign language, you were teaching it to non, non-deaf people. Correct. Cool. Yes. Like educators. I was teaching just a, like a high school. They had. Like a Spanish teacher. But a sign yeah, they had teacher. Spanish, German, Japanese, and sign language. Wow. And sign language is. Is universal, right? It's the same in China as it is in New Jersey. No, or whatever. no, no. That's like the most commonly asked question about, or on like the first day of class would be that it's not universal. Oh, wow. So even in countries where they speak English, like England and Canada, totally different. Oh, like what? it's yeah, insane. It's insane how different they are. Like when I was I in high school and in college, I was a like a travel nanny with this family, and when we were in England on the TV, there was like the little interpreter guy. And I was like, none of that makes any sense. It was, it was all like, everything was two handed like this. I realized their alphabet is two handed and Mm. American sign language is alphabet is one handed Mm. and like Canadian sign language. There's, there's Mexican sign language and there's Spanish sign language. Like there's just all over the place. Huh? That's so interesting. Yeah. I, it's sort of similar, like when you realize that your gestures aren't the same around the world, right? right? And like a thumbs up or, uh, you know, even eye contact. I mean, all sorts of things can be totally right. offensive, you know, Yeah, and my, else. yeah. my first instinct hearing that is like, oh, that's a shame that like everybody can't communicate if they speak sign language. But at the same time, we have different speaking languages, too, and we can't necessarily right. communicate. Sure. And we've gotten in discussions before. I think I have with other people, at least like, would the world be better if everyone spoke the same language? Like, oh, yeah. would we, if you could go to Afghanistan and meet someone and say, hi, like, I'm Paul, what's your name? What's your life like? Versus just hearing people on TV sort of, you know, what sounds like gibberish to you and you don't understand what these people are saying and you don't, you have less of a connection with who they are. Now, of course, right. you lose culture, you lose, you lose something. But do you gain enough that, that it's worth it? I, I don't know. I used to think, like, for sure, everyone should speak the same language. That would be amazing. I, even if it's not English, I'll learn it. Like, make it whatever. Mm. But, like, I, I think it would be better, you know? Like, we'd get along yeah. more. And we'd feel more alike or something. I think you know? there's truth to that. But, yeah, I think, I don't know, unfortunately, so much of culture is wrapped up in linguistics. So mm-hmm. to eliminate mm-hmm. that. And it is happening. I mean, in general, the world is getting less linguistically diverse over time. Yeah, languages die every year, right? Languages go extinct, and there's tons of languages that what? are endangered. And it's wow. it's actually really fascinating. Have you ever looked into any of that? It's No. It's sort of like, it always makes sense, and I'm going to butcher the explanation, but it's like a language is essentially endangered, and it has like a rating of how endangered it is. So if, for example you know, my father and my mom are from Germany and they speak German. Um, and then they have me, but they don't speak any German in the house because they want me to focus on English. Then all of a sudden within like a generation, you're cutting off the linguistic ties versus, you know, if my parents spoke German and they spoke it in the house so that I could learn it. And then we had kids and they lived in the house and we all spoke German you know, so you can kind of have, you can see how even in just a few generations, you can almost completely sever the knowledge that's, you know, linked to all yeah. to that, you know. I think yeah. that happens a lot in deaf households because like 90% of deaf, 90% of deaf babies have hearing parents. Like it's really, it's not that common for deaf people to have deaf children. It's more common for them to have hearing children. And if you were to have a deaf child as hearing parents, like unfortunately, not unfortunately, but in the eyes of the deaf community, their first reaction would probably be to get the cochlear implant or hearing aid or some kind of, because, you know, if you don't know any anything about sign language or the culture or the community and things like that, as a new parent or just a parent of somebody who is not what you were, I guess, expecting, you'd want to do whatever you can to make sure that that baby is, is, you know, taken care of. 
But with the deaf community, like the doctors can't be like, here's a pamphlet on the language. Like they have to do Mm -hmm. the like medical approach. And so what ends up happening is kids are growing up. You know, you're deaf when you have a cochlear implant. It makes you able to hear, but it doesn't make you hearing. You take it off to shower. You take it off to swim. It ruins any like residual hearing. You are completely deaf if you get the cochlear implant, but you can still hear. I have, there's, people are very Mm -hmm. passionate about this topic, so I won't get into it that much, but you know, it just, it's like the easy option for a lot of people. And so I think like deaf generations of, of deafness is always like evaporating. Oh, and then, right. Because it's, it's never generational. It's like maybe within society, knowledge is passed on, but you're not going to get that from your parents or your grandparents because they're likely not deaf also. Right. That, and just like the, the usage of the language, I guess, like more people are going with the implant and speech therapy and things like that to mm. be, to be more hearing instead of embracing the the culture, even if, you know, if deaf people have a hearing child, like there's already a disconnection and I don't know. Mm. It's, I mean, I guess it's totally different from like other like countries and cultures and stuff, but within America, the deaf community is very, very strong and passionate. But I've always said, if there should be one universal language, like that everybody knows, in addition to their other languages, why not one where most people have hands? Mm -hmm. It just seems convenient if everybody could just learn sign language. Think about it. You're like across the room from somebody and you don't want to shout because that's rude. You sign to them. I've done that so many times, like going to concerts or like going out with friends and whatever somebody like Kelsey will know sign language and I'll just, you know, fingerspell something to her. And it's so easy to forget how much of our communication is nonverbal anyways. I mean, we don't really like drive in that lane as, you know, verbal people or like hearing able people, but you know, it's still, there's so much we read involuntarily with like subconsciously just looking at people. So you would think that we could kind of, take that one step further so easily, but yeah. But the use which of the sign masks, language, like American it. sign language or Mexican sign language, you know, that'd be tough. So, yeah. but that's, uh, it's interesting. So, and I know you're not speaking for everybody or anything like that, but I would never before now, I never really would think that there are deaf people who are like, I don't want to hear, you know, like, don't give me some implant. Like I'm deaf. I'm proudly deaf. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to hear. Yes. I would say a large majority of the capital D deaf community. So it's like lowercase D is like the medical deaf, like, yes, I am deaf, meaning I can't hear. And then there's the capital D deaf. That's like, I'm deaf and proud. And it's like this. Mm-hmm. People will oh, do cool. like, like that. I've that's seen so that. Cool. I didn't since. know that. Um, yeah. They're like, I don't want, I don't want anything to do with a cochlear implant. I don't want my kids to have the cochlear implant. They, it's like, it's as controversial a topic as abortion. I, mm. in my opinion, wow. for, for deaf, capital D deaf people, mm-hmm. it's like, hmm. yeah, it's thank interesting. You. I actually, oh. there was a video that popped up on my news feeds recently and it was a couple, a deaf couple, and they were talking about why they don't use the implants and, you know, sort of framed it in like a no shame to anybody else, but this is why we choose not to. And she was, you know, they had really different experiences in it. She was born, Deaf, where he, I think, developed it um, mm-hmm. later on in life. So there was, you know, really key differences to, you know, where they were sort of on the spectrum of of hearing and speech and everything. But yeah, they just made the choice to exclusively sign. And then I think they have a couple kids that are also hearing impaired that they're, again, focusing on developing the sign language and things instead of yeah. turning to implants. I think I know who you're talking about. I think I've seen that. Um, it's probably, there's probably so one like person really out there on Insta- Instagram blowing up. And yeah. it's so interesting that that's how it starts, right? It's like yeah. those people who are brave enough to put their story out there and like not care what happens after that. And then all of a sudden yeah. more and more people are like, oh yeah, I guess I can admit it now too. Hmm. Yeah. yeah I think very, that the, the use of the masks was probably like a really difficult sure. transition for a lot of people because yeah. like. Oh my gosh, that's, I was like, am I going to be able to teach when I was still thinking about not quitting? Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't want to teach with a mask on. That doesn't, ugh, that doesn't, how would I do it? Like, how would they know half of what I'm signing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that would have so been super hard. Cues. 
even yeah. if yeah. even if you can hear like uh talking to someone without seeing all this verbal all this nonverbal communication that yeah. it, it, it's, it's actually harder yeah. to understand people even if you can hear you know so i can only yeah. imagine if if you're relying on those lips yeah like seeing them Mm-hmm. I can only imagine. The first time Luke and I went to a grocery store, like last April with our masks on, he was like, are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? Are you, I can't tell if you're mad at me. He kept asking because it was just this, uh-huh. you know, Your little shifty <laughs> like, eyes. Hey, what's going on? Uh-huh. It, was, it was, you know, takes getting used to. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So funny. There was a first, uh, like deaf representation, I guess on bachelor this year. Yes, I watched that. I forgot. Abigail. I'm, Abigail. Yeah, she was so yeah. sweet and cool. It was awesome so for her. Cute. Yeah. She looked but, so much like one of my students, and I just loved her. Mm. She just you, reminded me. Of it's just like I felt, I mean, you realize she had sort of like, you know how a lot of contestants on The Bachelor, there's always like something that they've kept secret that they're like guarding with their life, and they feel like once they reveal it, they're going to be deemed like unworthy of this person's love. And it was, bless her heart, it was like, you could tell how heavy it was for her to confide and like tell him about her, you know, situation and say like, if we have kids, it's most likely that my kids will be, you know, deaf as well. Oh, really? And yeah. you could just see how heavy it was on her. And yeah, I would never witnessed a moment like that. And so, so if, I was, I was glad she was on there and she held herself really well. And if you are yeah. hearing impaired, you're more likely to have a hearing impaired child than someone who's not hearing impaired having a child? I think well, there's like different the f- genetic conditions uh, and things okay, different that can things affect. Cause it. So I mean, she had yeah, you're, something more genetic. She had something that was I like understand. her parents were both deaf and it was whatever was, wow. you know, impacting her was, yeah, most likely yeah. to be passed I on. See. Okay. There's but, a lot of illnesses. There's like Usher's syndrome, which causes deafness, Meniere's disease. Um, but I want to say just as like a, as a correction, hearing impaired is not a con- not considered like a good term to the people that are cap- capital D deaf. They would prefer hard of hearing. Hard of hearing. But the word impaired implies like broken. Mm. I see. Um, Understand. Just letting is you know. Deaf um, but yeah, offensive? like there's what is it offensive to say this person's deaf? No. Okay. Cool. No. I don't think so. Unless they're not deaf. And then you're just like calling some, like a random person deaf. That might be. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If you're like, what are you, save deaf? That one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what right, are you, right. deaf? Yeah. I feel like we used to say that as kids. What are you, deaf? You can not hear me? But anyway, <laughs> yeah. the 90s were a different time. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. We got a, there was a lot more. Yeah, we said worse things than deaf. I'll There's tell you that. a lot that. going <laughs> down. Bullying in yeah. the early 2000s. <sighs> Man. Have right? Kids- do you know that movie? Kids were mean. That that movie Mean Girls was based off of like Tina Fey wrote that about a high school in our our conference. Like we went to that high school essentially. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah it was like a, oh. a north suburb of Chicago north, high school. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't ours, but it was like a few times. And over. The God, it takes you guys me go back to the same to high like school. The, we went we to the w- same elementary school. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've known Paul since the third grade. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. She was my dream oh, my girl. Gosh. <laughs> wow. So yeah. you, okay, that's so cool. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So you we were a mean back. girl then. Hmm. I wasn't a mean girl. <laughs> You're a very nice girl. Honestly, I, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who would see this and disagree strongly, but like, I always tried to be really nice to people. That was, I, I prided myself on feeling like I had friends in lots of places, you know, like I wasn't Mm going to be mean to anybody. Like to me, that wasn't cool for as long as I can remember. You've always been such a nice person. Thank you. I was a mean girl at times. (laughs) I mean, we all did. I mean, we all did mean things and not to say I didn't, but you know, and our friend group is a little guilty of this. Our, our home homies, you know, we tease, we tease a lot, you know, we tease each other a lot. And but that's like, we know our limits. We know our limits and we know like we can, you know, I, I'm meaner to, to my very close friends than I am to a stranger because sure. my friend knows, you know, I love you. You know, I know you're going to think this is more funny than hurtful, things like that, you know. Sure. <laughs> I guess it's true. I know. Maybe but it's wrong. Maybe we're wrong. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe someone's going to text us after seeing this be like, you know what? I've been no. hey, to talk. Yeah, listen. 
Um, I just realized that this behind me makes me look like I'm in an inner, like I'm in the office <laughs> and this is like the little breakaway because there's like, there's the blinds behind me and I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's sort of like tropical. You've got the giraffe back there, the plants. It's feeling good. Feels good to me. Yeah. It's a good vibe. Have Thanks. you guys set a date? Are you guys planning a wedding? Just riding out the engagement, living life? Yeah. We're just... We want to get married in Sonoida. Mm. That's, you know, yes. you know how much I love Sonoida, where I, you helped me celebrate my 30th year. That was year. so fun. I think that you might have been the, what'd you say? Oh, I only took like a thousand pictures. Oh, that's my, my God. role in life. I just need to become a professional photographer already because that's all I'm already doing it. I just don't yeah. get paid. Yeah. You took the best pictures if I only didn't have my classic drunk face, which is like dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and all of the pictures, like beautiful backgrounds. Luke is giving me a hug and I'm like, <laughs> I've got wine teeth, wine stain. Like yeah, I just looked like a fucking like mess. I don't well, think I drink a drop of water. We'll do a do over and I'll just get out there. I'll make sure I get out there earlier in the day next time. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. But we want to get married awesome. in Sonoida. Um, there was a venue that ha- did like a, it was like a, an eight cabin weekend getaway that is like set for weddings and you can have 16 guests stay with you for the weekend. Like, oh, nice. wow. uh, like out in the, the rolling hills of Sonoida, but they just went out of business, no. unfortunately. And oh, so I don't know what the, like the property, if like there's going to be new ownership or whatever, but I don't know. We'll figure something out. Mm-hmm. We're not in any rush because like. Got peens to make. You got peens. You're going to yeah, have all this dick money. You're going to be throwing <laughs> dick money around, you know, you'll be like, I'll buy Sonoida. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I'm going to make my own dick wine. Oh, oh, here you go. I don't know. You know, I go on, I go on <laughs> Zillow all the time. I look at property in Sonoida all the mm. time. I dream of it. So maybe I'll, I'll buy the freaking wedding is venue. Arizona wine and country. Yeah. It's about like an hour Southeast of Tucson. And okay. it's actually turned into like quite a wine region in and of itself. Like Arizona wines are getting a lot of traction and mm. yeah, there's just a ton of wineries popping up down there and Sort of like rolling hills. It's just hills the most beautiful. And it's just, it's, it's like. so peaceful. It looks nothing like Tucson. There's no Mm-mm. cactuses in sight. Yeah. Once you get in there, it's just like these rolling hills. There's like random horses, beautiful ranches. You can just see all the houses just up like singular windy roads, oh, like I on a hill. It. It's just like. It's dreamy. Perfect, it's dreamy it is really what it is. is. And so like, dreamy. it's always cooler because the elevation's higher so it's always cooler than tucson and you get like Mm. you know you'll get more rain and more snow over there and you get like these really dramatic arizona skies just kind of always (sighs) above you it's it's luxury like it's just down to earth luxury for sonoida like it just makes sense i would get married down there too man that was a good 30th birthday luke was so nice and get got like a whole airbnb for a bunch of friends to go down there we just and cars like arranged transportations so we got to drive around because normally when i go i'll go for like the day so i'll you know i'll do a wine tasting but we're there for like hours and then you drive back the hour you know but he said that he paid more for those drivers than he did for the Airbnb. I believe it. But the Airbnb was so cheap and the drivers were so expensive. It was like total opposite because the Airbnb I thought would would have been more, but it was like it was you nothing. You know what? Like good the, for the drivers but, though. They're down there trying to trying to get theirs. That's good. Yeah. And they were so nice. There was they just were. like an old married couple that was just driving a bunch of drunk 30-year-olds around and, and God, it was amazing. And the day before on patience. my actual birthday it wasn't my actual birthday. It doesn't matter. Hmm. Um, he put me on a helicopter. We went on a helicopter and flew around downtown Tucson. Wow. Because I have such a boner for helicopters, too. <laughs> Every time I see a helicopter in this, like the low-flying ones, when I lived in downtown Mesa, I'd always see the low-flying helicopters. I would just stand outside and stare at them. I don't know what it is, but they get me hard. Did you ever? So. <laughs> did you ever have like a, a helicopter bust up a party at the U of A? No, I did. I did. That was the really? one of the wildest experiences of college. I was at a party at an apartment complex and, you know, I don't know, whatever it was like, if it got too 
wild or whatever, but the, yeah. the police force sent helicopter police and they just start circling the apartment complex with these massive searchlights and they're like oh, shining them everywhere. And like, you just see all these party people scurry around. <laughs> and so then I remember like, kind of like befriending some random strangers smoking cigarettes because I, I was actually waiting for a friend who was like hooking up with somebody. So I couldn't get a hold of my friend. <laughs> such a good I friend. didn't want to leave until I found her. Wow. So I was like wasting time, ended up going into the apartment with these like random people. And that was the first time I saw cocaine. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was, first time I, you saw it? Yeah. I didn't do it, but I saw it wow. and I had never been around coke before. And I was like, I'm trapped. It was like that moment where I'm like, I just went inside a random apartment with people I don't know. And now there's like a pile of cocaine it's like that like, scene from super bad it was that moment where i was <laughs> like, like walked in. what yeah. what are my like choices out of your league yeah right away. i was like i i it's time it's time to call the car and go home you mm-hmm. know like wow oh there's a kid <laughs> screaming outside we just heard oh yeah i hear uh, baby maybe oh. that's picking up on the mic we were talking about that i do the remember other day. i was at one of my sisters i don't know why my parents let me go to my my older sister's like college parties all the time when i, w- I was like 16 i'm the youngest and the oldest is five years older than me so when they were all in college mom would have me drive like food over to like the college house parties and stuff and one time the cops came and everybody was running. And I just remember they, I got to the fence and I said, wait, I'm 16. And everybody was like, you're right. Get her over, get her over. They were like helping me over first because I was 16. And I just was like, my mom sent me over to drop off the deviled eggs. If she only knew what was, <laughs> what was actually going on. She's like, Rach, go bring the, go bring the snacks over to That's the, so cute. To the party. Wow. Like they need it. Otherwise it's just Everyone's pure alcohol. Everyone's vomiting deviled eggs as <laughs> the cops are showing yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's so funny. That's my, pretty fun. My sister once. So my sister, my oldest sister is seven years older than me. And then the middle one is like about four. So there was one time where my dad was traveling internationally and we had like a young college babysitter come stay with us for like the week. And my sister, my oldest sister, just took advantage of the sitter so bad, ended up throwing this massive party with like people everywhere. And I mean, I will never live this down, but we, the cops came and I started, I was eight years old. I started stashing people into like the bathroom, like hiding them behind the shower curtain. I was like, just stay in here. And I'd lead them into bedrooms and like close them away. (laughs) And my sister and her friends just like (laughs) never forgot. They're like, she's one of us. Like at age eight, she just knew like, just you stay there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that was um, the beginning of the end for me. Yeah. <laughs> the end of your, your criminal career. Yeah. <laughs> Lying to the police. That's yeah, amazing. exactly. Abating the law. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is, I mean, that's called street smarts, Christine. Yeah, you know, it you either actually. have it or you don't. I, yeah, I'm not all that do. book smart, but you know what? I get by. <laughs> I think I'm neither. I don't, I, I don't know if I would have thought of that at eight. But I couldn't read no. till the first grade, so I don't know. What, I don't know what that makes yeah. me. I think sometimes I still don't know how to read. Sometimes, it can be hard. like on a road trip with Kelsey, I saw a billboard and I was like, "Oh, look, a bird fair!" <laughs> and Kelsey was like, "It says bridal fair." <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I, 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 I know, sure. but you know the. Birds, that's what they call brides. I'm now. an atrocious speller. That's my weakness. And like, I literally texted to our friends the other day, like, guilt with a Q. And then I was so mortified. I was like, oh my God. Like, literally, quilt? <laughs> like, quilt? You feel guilty? Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm like, oh, guilty, star. Like, I sent it. I sent oh the corrections. God. I know. But it was just, I, yeah. I'm the bad number at of that. times that I spelled <laughs> sure, S H U R E. I mean, I guess that's like <laughs> spelling things phonetically. Yeah. Sure, I why don't. is it S U R E? Like, know. why are certain things spelled the way that they are? It I don't want to get back into linguistics, but I it's a, it's I agree. Odd. Like, why can't it be like Spanish? I mean, there's a few weird things that happen in Spanish, but for the most part, it's like it's more phonetic. essentially what it sounds like. Well, like dialect evolves naturally as people talk; mm-hmm. they say words differently, but mm-hmm. the way it is spelled stays the same. I mean, that's really, I think. Well, that's not actually true either. 
Well, so, sure, you, you you're can, right. Some, like, but, okay, spelling changes slower. Yeah, it, that's true. Yeah. But I used to have to like, I was an English major in college, English and geography, and we had to like look at the origin of words from mm, medieval cool. English and like track the way they would arrive in our modern day doorstep, you know, and you, you do a lot of times they're like essentially just simplified over time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, extra syllables or silent syllables or things like that generally got eliminated. But yeah. And it's even like the same thing happened with my my last name. My dad always talks about that. Like my last name coming from Ireland would have been way more complicated with a lot more letters. But then when mm. you arrive as an immigrant, you come here, you say Donley, and they don't hear all the they don't hear all the double syllables or the double ends, the no, double no, L's. We. It was like you know Donaghy. There was like a G in it. I mean, it was yeah, like a long extended. Like- the E-I-G-H or like the, there's probably a G-H in there like, somewhere. Yeah, yeah there was a G-H. To, America mm-hmm. didn't know what to do with this G-H no, thing. They're they like, couldn't. just, it's silent. Forget it. And Pretend and it's not there. It just doesn't ignore exist. It. Yeah, ignore it. But they had, it. It's, that's the trend, I think. It's just wow. the simplification yeah. and like that bastardization that happens, really. Sure. Yeah. But Frost, sure. that's a, it's a hard one to butcher. It's a nice one. Waspy. <laughs> nice and waspy, yeah. <laughs> Somebody told me that and I didn't know what waspy was. But he worked at Congress. He was like this New Jersey guy who wore a leather hat, a leather, you know, those like whatever. Like he the bicycle like, cool. caps? Very Wait, like the name. bike hat with like the. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm trying it, to it was, it. I don't know. He was, he was really weird, but he just kept calling me waspy. <laughs> and his accent was so like, like forced. <laughs> forced. Waspy. Like, okay, Bzz, whatever. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a wasp. I love wasps. Whatever. Yeah. One day I'll own a penis empire. So yeah. suck yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you can suck my penis empire. <laughs> yeah. Is there? I what? think my parents are just like, they, I, I don't send them any of my videos that I make. I think like my brother does that. And so, like, when my, I mentioned something and my mom was like, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw a video about this. I'm like, are you watching all my stuff, mom? This is like, I don't know. That's there's, the way I feel something. about this right here. I'm like, really? If, yeah. I mean, if I make, if my mom makes a comment or something that she heard, it, I'm uh, like, wait, you listen? Yeah. It's like, what else? I get did surprised. I, what else have I said? Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Cause I'm talking, I think this I'm is talking so cool the way I would talk to you, saying. but I'm not actually saying things that I would probably say to a whole room of people, right? Like it is different, right. but essentially there's still a room of people here. Yeah. There yeah. is a small, small room of people here. You're right. That's a good way to look at it. Or maybe not the right way to look at it. Cause it's better to just, it's just us. And we're just talking. I think that's, but it, 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 you very quickly, it just feels that way. Like it never feels like there's anyone. Well, it's like the elephant in the room, you know, like the first thing we said when we started this call was, you know, I've stalked you on, on social media and you said the same thing. And it's like that give and take it's everybody has searched people before they meet them now. And it's like this unspoken thing in the room. Like, yeah, we're alone right here, but it has, it has another context, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're like getting to know each other, but you, there is the first impression already happened before we met, which is, it is odd. It is weird thing. And I think it's particularly interesting in like a dating context. It's like, do you pretend like you didn't just stalk somebody before you go on a first date, even though like everybody knows you stalked them, you don't swipe right to anybody without first going on their, you know, their Instagram and like making sure that it's not all you know, selfies at the gym, like you check it out and you make sure that there's like, you know, some, something yeah. mm-hmm. that works, right? Show like me you, a dog. Yeah. Give me a dog. Like a <laughs> picture of you and your grandma, like, uh-huh. you know, just something wholesome. Show me that you're not a sociopath. Yes. Right. But do you acknowledge it or do you just, is that just the thing that's like unspoken now? It's just, I don't know. I think you acknowledge it more and more. Like you said, you're like, oh, I've been stalking you on Instagram. It's like, it's just kind of an icebreaker even, you know, it's like we're, and it was like, yeah, I, I was talk, I was just talking to you too, you know. Yeah, but it's she's kinda, a bold person. You're a bold person. Not everybody feels that comfortable sure. just owning what And it would maybe come off is. creepy too. Yeah. Like, yes, I was, I stalked you on Instagram. <laughs> you don't necessarily want to hear that out of first Yeah, day. I know. It's interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, I, I don't envy are like single friends say, right now. Luckily, we don't have to worry about single that. Single is single's tricky. This I think dating during the 
pandemic, it posed a lot of challenges for people. Yeah. And like, yeah, I think this year just really did a number on, on a lot of like aspects that are just seem like, when is it okay to do this again? Like, Mm -hmm. like I did karaoke recently and I thought that I'll never get to do karaoke again. I thought when, when COVID happened, I was like, well, there goes the, like one of my favorite things to do when I'm drunk. And then sure enough, they have these little like puffy things that you put over. It's a mask for your mic. Mike nice. Wow. And it just was, it was so amazing. And then they had this like glass thing. It's just like, everything was great. Smart. And, like dating seems like something that I, I'm just, I'm really hoping that people are able to like get back out there because I don't ca- much care for the, zoom dating Mm -hmm. not that I did it but I just like my opinion of it just seems like that's really hard I don't Mm -hmm. know I mean dating is like pheromone related you can't just be behind a screen yeah yeah I gotta smell you what do you smell like buddy (laughs) yeah (laughs) gotta get a whiff (laughs) so what song did you sing um gangsta's paradise oh wow which I hope is not I don't know. I go back and forth on, like, I stopped singing the R. Kelly. I was singing that Ignition. Ignition yeah. Song that was our buddy's I just, uh, go-to. I don't ever want to, like, appropriate anything, and I also don't want to ever, like, sing music that is, like, not good. But I love Gangsta's Paradise, <laughs> and I know every single word, and I'm so good at singing it, so sing I sing song. it. And That's Luke great. is a, a natural singer, and he was, like, in choir and stuff, and his, his dad is, like, a music teacher. And so he sings the chorus because I actually can't sing for shit. Um, so you do the so rap, I, and, he does I rap. The, and he does the yes. hook. Oh, that's mm-hmm. great. What a dynamic duo. Yeah, it was so much fun. Um, need a and then let's do it. Let's do it. I used to, I was a big total eclipse of the heart fan. I was like, into that I've for seen a long you perform that, that one. Like, you what don't, is that song? You, um, by Pat Benatar. Total. No, Bonnie wait. Tyler. Oh shit. Sorry. I'm bad with names. It's like total eclipse of the heart. That one. Once upon a time. I was, I was falling in love. And now no. I'm only falling apart. Hmm. Nothing uh, I can do. Total eclipse of the heart. Yeah. I'm sure I've heard about it. Watch the music video. Oh, it's wait, a good time. There's even... men in these like black looking like diapers and they're like doing karate. <laughs> and it's just like, is she fucking a student? Is like, that's like the question I have <laughs> when I watch that music video is like, is she in love with her student and sad that he's graduating or, and why are his eyes glowing? Like oh. there's so many questions. So is this song okay to sing? Maybe there's some art right. going on with that song. Oh my God. <laughs> you don't <laughs> you can't just sing anything anymore. Rachel doesn't just sing karaoke though. I was telling no, Paul, yeah, Paul was true, like, what can you tell me about sing. Rachel? And I was like, well, she destroys karaoke. Like you, you get fans, you get people from the audience involved. There's a lot of gestures, a lot of drama. It is like I high have energy. scars on my knees and <laughs> on the top of my feet from doing karaoke slides over and over. I have is scars. Is that when you ripped the, the green pantsuit? That pants, At Heidi's wedding. That pantsuit was so good. And she slid and busted it out. Wow. What's the song that you slide on? Like a Bruce Springsteen? I'm upset about it. I'm upset <laughs> that you look so good in that damn suit. <laughs> Well, I did buy an extra pair of the pants, so I do have Good. non-ripped pants, but they're they don't fit me anymore. <laughs> not after I tried pandemic. To put them on and it was like no, it didn't go past my thighs. But well, don't worry, no. I took a lot of pictures of you in that suit, so those oh will gosh, live forever. Been, yeah, you were you've been my like core photographer for hey. like all events that you have been to. You just like are there with the camera. Yeah, let me know. So, I, I wish I could do the same you for you because that I would take your phone and try to take pictures of you. And I, they're just never as good. They're just, <laughs> you just I appreciate you trying. Too. Like, you I know, like, like you, I'm all about candid captures. I feel like I, I know yeah, how to look yeah. out for like the moment when people are all laughing and stuff. That's what I go for. Mm. But even like, if this we go on a walk, it's like walking with like a curious dog, you know, cause you're like, you're like stopping at every flower, like to check it out. You like walk into people's yards and like take a photo of their porch and stuff. I do. It's interesting. You know, I mean, <laughs> She's almost nine and a half times out of 10, I don't do anything with the photos, but yeah. I do. I feel like an excessive need to document. It's and cool. I, I, I love that. About I just you. love it. 
This is how my fiance takes pictures. He'll hold the phone up like this. And then he goes like. (laughs) Bangs the phone. So then it's immediately blurry. And then he puts it in his pocket. And he goes, I got to let it develop. Don't (laughs) let me look at this picture right now. And most of the time it's like. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. I like, I like this Luke fellow more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shout out to Luke. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So um, what else? Have you gotten your shots yet? What's that? What? Yeah, have you gotten any shots yet? Are you vaccinated? I have. We have one. Same. The next one is on the 28th for me and the 29th for him. What do you guys got? You got shot? I got yeah, Moderna got? on Monday, actually. He goes tomorrow first, for his first one. Yeah. We just did it this week. Big boy. Big it, boy, it, number uh, one. Getting my... Getting my- <laughs> Go get your booster. Yeah, yeah, get my booster. No, that's the main deal. <laughs> what are you guys getting? Moderna, Pfizer? Moderna. Moderna. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Tight. We should get tattoos Same. like Moderna. <laughs> like, what's up? I, pay- I posted Moderna. a video on TikTok that has like almost a million views. And I said, I got Moderna in my arm, Mirena in my uterus, and a Moscow mule in my hand. <laughs> and people just fucking love it. They're wow. like, it's a vibe. Oh, TikTok celeb God. right here. Honestly. No, you know I was cur- I was so slow to TikTok. I refuse. What does that sound? This sound? Is that music? Oh, oh. <laughs> I, that's funny that you heard it. I don't know why you heard it and we didn't, but it, it was that. It was that sound. There's like a <laughs> we have a soundboard here and it comes with sounds <laughs> preloaded. Ooh, do the laughter again. It's weird how it kind of like it comes in waves. It like psych. <laughs> it's weird. Let's see. We got some. How I think funny. there's like spooky sound. Oh, oh, that's that's another good <laughs> one for a joke. They love it. Oh, spooky. Spooky. Oh, this is if someone tells a bad joke. Crickets. <laughs> I need that. If I were still a teacher, I would have bought that. Dude, a kid in high oh school had it like on his phone and like, or maybe it was college, like would like, you know, <laughs> play like play the sound by like and embarrass the teacher. But it was funny. The teacher laughed. Wait, we got one That's more sound. So I don't funny. even know what this one is. I hope it's not offensive. <laughs> oh, a little dream sequence. Oh, that's good. Anyway, sorry. I thought it was going to be like a woman moaning or something. Like yeah. one of those weird ones. Yeah, well, I didn't like, know what I was going to push. Up. Like, I don't know what they got on this board, you know? <laughs> it's fun. So no, that, the board doesn't uh, speak for so, the... Anyway. So you guys are... So tell me about why did... What what, what made you guys want to have a podcast? Like, I this is so cool to me. I've wanted to do one for a while. Like, uh, kind of years. I'm a big fan of podcasts. I listen to a lot of like comedians talking to other comedians podcasts mostly but anyway i just like them and then uh you know i just wanted to start it i work for a podcast also and so i was while i was doing that i was like it's probably a good time to just start my own too you know because eventually i won't be a part of this pod. it's not my podcast you know and so like it's and i really like doing it also so i don't know i just kind of decided to start and then I was like, hey, do you want to do like a podcast with me? And it, it very quickly became like our thing, not like my thing. And that that's really what I like about it, too. It's like something we just get to do together and and we get to that's talk so to cool. people like uh, even like, well, I've never met you. So this is super cool. Like, you know, we probably wouldn't have talked for like an hour and a half if not for this. And then even <laughs> best like best friends of mine or something or, or people I know even better you don't sit down and talk to somebody like in this way. You don't yeah, ask these like questions. Uninterrupted right. without looking at your cell phone. Yeah, no phones. You, know? you don't pick at people's things or ask or, you know, it's like, what was your childhood like? You know, like asking that to friends. Right. There's a lot of a lot of things you don't really ask. You know, you never interview your friends. Right. So, it's like in, it's this yeah. interview. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. It reminds me of um the i don't know if you guys like hot ones but the episode of hot ones when he is interviewing um paul rudd and paul rudd is like going back and asking him questions and it's like they're both just like such good interviewers and they were talking to each other in such a it was just like the it's my favorite episode i've watched it so many times i think it's just like 
that's the kind of shit I like is just the interviewing thing and like asking questions of people. Like, I don't know if you guys have like asked your parents questions recently, but I asked my dad, I was like, Hey, what was the Navy? Like, you know, just like mm. asking a question that I didn't really, you know, yeah, know about. Exactly. And it's like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta start asking more questions mm. to my parents. Yeah. And Definitely. And I think this Good is so goal. cool. Have you guys, how many guests, what what guest am I on this? I think Number you'll be like 14 maybe. Is that right? Oh I believe God. so. 13 yeah, or 14. We've been doing it like every week, which is cool. For me, it was, um, I yeah, think sorry, a little I totally bit. T- took that whole question. No, I, I, I just wanted to respond because I feel like I almost always react the same way when somebody asks. I just look at you because it was all Paul's idea. And right. I, I'm not really like a podcast person. I listen. I try to listen. I watch more now than I used to, but it was all really new. Um, And so I guess for me, what I liked about it was just something new, something different. And it did give me like a chance to practice and, you know, remember not to just talk about yourself, right? Like your basic, I'm like getting practice at interviewing people and kind of these skills that are. I don't know. It's kind of cool. And I like that aspect of it. And then, yeah, we just have a lot of like creative projects started, I guess. And so it's fun to just say yes. But I kind of like bugged out. Like I'm not on the first podcast because I had like an anxious moment. I couldn't like I couldn't I didn't want to go on and talk about myself like I wasn't in a really good place. And so for me, it's like an exercise in accountability in a way, too, where I'm like, you know, Yes. Forcing myself to be honest, take ownership and just kind of try to celebrate who I am instead of, you know, just be against the wall. Yeah, that's and I imagine I I want to know if this has been hard for you, but is the sound of your own voice like nails on a chalkboard sometimes? Like when you're doing this, or, like used editing, to be like that. Some, like, It used to be, honestly, it was really hard. And it was the same when I saw my face on screen, because that was something I've never really done either. Um, Yeah, it took some getting used to. And it's it's like a practice in self-love where you're like, okay, yeah, sometimes you stumble on your words. Like sometimes you don't say like it doesn't come out the way you wanted it to. And, you know, it's like this balance between trying not like I want to be aware and be mindful I don't obviously want to say something that's going to like offend people but also just kind of taking back the tendency and reaction to like be polished and just sort of roll it back and be like okay it's okay to be I imagine you guys imperfect like super nice after at the end of it I, I imagine you guys feel like you just did like a whole shift because I like you know you we are being recorded And like, it's always going to be there. Now Mm -hmm. this always will exist. And like, that is so hard to, to get used to. And, and, you know, I, my only comparison is like putting videos on TikTok, but it's like, if I'm trying to record a video, there have been times when, for whatever reason, I'm just not happy with how it sounds. I'm not happy with how I look. I'm not happy with how I'm talking. I keep messing up my words and I just like, like record a video and then, edit it later and then put it, I don't like start to open up TikTok to record. And there are videos of me having like full on temper tantrums because (laughs) I can't say what I'm trying to say or do it in a way that I'm like, Mm -hmm. there's like bloopers, but the bloopers are me just being like, you fucking idiot. Why can't you say one word? Like I just like lose it and just. And maybe there's a time and a place where you'll want to release those and like laugh at them. But (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. It it's it like is hard. It can out. be really hard. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. It's also like we've gotten into sort of like more uh, like deeper conversations or talked about kind of more controversial subjects at times, and it's like you never are as articulate as you had <laughs> hoped you would be. You, your point is never as solid as you thought it was right. when it just bounced around your own head. It's always like three days later, you're like. You know, you're, you're like now you're ready to have the conversation, but it's too late and it's already out and we can yeah. always delete it. But, you know, it's like it's out, you know, and I, so yeah. I sort of I don't know it. It's weird that it's kind of scary in this day and age to like have your opinions be public, you know, mm-hmm. and like uh, there's you know, it, but but it's like, I don't know, we're, we're just we're just talking, we're just spitballing and it's actually really helping 
at least I, I can speak for myself, like helping my thoughts be more well-rounded, you know, because it's, it's almost like science. Like you, you present something sure. and there's like peer review and people question it and hit, and it just gets beaten into this like really nice solid thing versus it was just bouncing around in my head before, yeah. before I said it out loud and nobody questioned it and nobody, you know, so it, it's kind of cool. It's like hammering a sword to be like <laughs> a tighter thing. You know, I don't know. It's really, right. it's, like it's helping me a lot, like form opinions, speaking with more purpose, speaking with more, mm -hmm. Like, I mean what I say now and this, that way, if it's out there, then, then that's out there. Mm -hmm. That's, 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 our jobs are very different, but I feel a lot of what you guys are talking about. And I think it's awesome. This is so cool. Oh, I hope this podcast you. goes on forever and I hope that it <laughs> gains like massive massive attention i this is really really cool Thank what's you. been what's been the the most fun part of this mm. like, like a moment has, or a, like a factor of your of this of having this whole podcast what's what's your favorite part of it i mean like i said just like interviewing friends you know and asking like we had a we've had some some i don't know just some close friends like friends we grew up with you know and like I found something new out about this person who I know they're like a brother, you know, but it's like, I never knew that. I never asked, you know, it's like, we just kind of, we talk about movies or we talk about music or we talk about how you doing today, but you never go like, Hey, like, remember that thing? Like what, like, how was that for you? Like what, you know, just, yeah. you get to know people better. I don't know. Interviewing your friends, like just yeah. this, this unique form of a conversation that you just don't normally do. And yeah. I think it's helping me get closer with, with everybody. I definitely feel that it's, you know, it's a great way to connect for obvious reasons. But for me, I think it's been, I don't know, just eye opening, you know, recognizing and having these conversations and learning new things about what I think or, you know, how people perceive me versus how I think I am. You know, there's just a lot of moments that seem to come up where you're like, just I'm just looking at things in a different way, you know, yeah. a chance to kind of get out of my own way of thinking and my own way of seeing the world and kind of connect with different perspectives, which I mean, has been huge coming off of like one of the most isolating years of life. You know, it feels yeah. really good to have meaningful connection, you know. So that's been, yeah. I think, the best part. I want to commend you also because my whole life I've been like, can somebody please film me? You know, like let's everybody look at me, please. You know, but like <laughs> I'm I'm behind the camera. Reserved. Yeah, and th this like I know this is a step outside your comfort zone, and it's like I'm impressed that yeah. you're like just going for it. You know, I, I thanks. I think it's I love it. I love you. Thanks. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. Christine. Love you too. I love you too. Yeah, too. A lot of love. A lot of love. Yeah. Love. Yeah. You guys are doing great. This is fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I'm, you for I'm doing yeah. this. Yeah. Well, thanks We're for proud coming of you. on. So, is your TikTok? I want to let people know where to follow you. So, can you? So it's plug Rachel Day in? Frost, but with two T's. When that video, when that first video, it got taken down for violating community guidelines, which I. Um, appealed because I said, there's no naked people in this video. Every time I get my thing taken down, I say, there's no naked people in this video. What do you, this is a tight eye dick. What do you want from me? <laughs> but that first one, they made me change my username for some reason. Like, right. That like the day that I posted it, it was like Rachel day frost is not available any longer. So now it's Rachel day frost with two T's titty, but everything else is frost day is my middle name. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Rachel day frost. Rachel Day Frost. <laughs> and then my Instagram's Body by Frost. And yeah. I, I'm my Frost. I, Go check it out. Get all the peens and weens and boobs of your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's such a I'm gonna make a bumper sticker with that. That's Go nice. ahead. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, we we're gonna put in an order too. So <laughs> yes. Don't yeah. don't put in an order. Just tell me what you want. Christine, you already told me what. That what you like from the shop. I, I meant to send you things and I didn't. Please don't 
please don't buy things. I, I'm drowning in dicks over here. Let me just send you something. <laughs> yeah, send okay, whatever you've got. you got. You got sunset peens. you got tie-dye peens. We'll take them. Yeah. Send, if you got something, <laughs> okay. send around. We've got fridge yeah, magnets. We I'll don't discriminate. Yeah, we're not going to make it complicated for you. You send us the dick, we'll put it on our bodies, you know? How about how about some eggplants, eh? Eggplants, cool. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a circumcised eggplant. It's a hefty. Yeah. He's a girdy. A thick, girdy? Thick daddy. Mm-hmm. Girthy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you guys so much for having me, and I I'm so proud of you, and Back and this is you. really really awesome. I feel like really blessed to have been able to be on this, and to I don't know, just talk to you guys and and meet you, Paul. It was nice to meet you, Christine. You look radiant as oh, ever, and thank you, you too. I just I love you guys. I love you too. Love thank you, you too. for coming on. I know it was out of your comfort zone too, so way to be. Thanks. The the mezcal was a nice tip, although I went with vodka. But, oh yeah, I was but, like, just just liquid courage it if you have to. Yeah, we we got yeah, whiskey going on here. Yeah. It makes it fun, you know. Yeah, we always kind of like let's have a cocktail, like let's sit down and talk. It makes it fun. I don't know. Just see, see where see how crazy it gets. Yeah, exactly. You can know. always edit it out, you know. So yeah. Oh, yeah um, <laughs> well, hey, Rachel Day Frost, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> clap for Rachel. Amanda's here right now. I'm going to see her tomorrow. She's having a sleepover here. She's going to be on. She's our next guest. <gasps> yes, she's coming there. on tomorrow. I know. Get in the car and drive <laughs> over here. <laughs> I know. Oh, I get such bad FOMO when I find out that other friends are hanging out. Ugh. Well, give her and her butt the tightest <laughs> squeeze. And, and I know that's probably out of your comfort zone, but I'm telling you, just squeeze it. And just say, it's from Rachel. That's it. She'll know. That is She'll definitely know. not the relationship Amanda and I have. She would like certainly jump not, six feet high. Certainly not the one her, <laughs> I and Amanda have. I'll, I'll let no, you, you do that butt grabbing. Yeah. boobs. And you <laughs> honk the butt. Just give her a quadruple honk. She'll think it's funny. She'll like it. She'll love it. Oh, man. <laughs>